Good morning. Today is September the 6th, 2020, and we are grateful that you've chosen to come and to worship with us this morning. As we join our hearts together for a time of worship and praise, I invite you now to join with us in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Our loving Father, thank you for this day and for the opportunity that we have to come into your presence. May your spirit wash over us. May it anoint us with fresh fire for the work that you called us to. But now, O oh Lord, hear our praise and our thanksgiving for your continued presence in and with our lives as we seek to carry your message into the world. Hear our praise. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. And now, as you are able, I invite you to stand and join with us as we sing. today I invite you to lift up the prayer needs that are enclosed in the email that brings the notice of this video to you. These are families that need your loving, caring, praying touch and I ask you to hold them in your heart this week. As you spend your time with God, may it be that you hold these people before God as you hold yourself and your family before God. And then may God's peace settle upon you. May God's healing rest upon you and on those you are praying for. And may it be that God enables you to know that you are a part of all that he is doing. We ask you to be in prayer for the leaders of our nation, for the church, and for all the people. That they may know the very touch, the healing presence of God in their lives. Pray for those who are impacted by and affected by the, the COVID-19. We ask that uh, God will continue to, to touch those who are working to provide a, a vaccine and those who are working to bring healing to those in their care. Be with the families who've lost loved ones and who now are worried for those who are uh, related to them as they experience the effects of this coronavirus upon themselves and their families. And then may God give us peace that he continues to walk with us in all of our journeys. And so now I invite you to join for a moment of our pastoral prayer and then for our Lord's Prayer. May we pray. Loving God, we thank you 
you are constantly present and it is to our benefit and it is our joy to ex to experience you as we enter into each day you walk with us you help us to understand you give us peace in our hearts for things that we can't comprehend and you give us joy that you always always hold us always care for us Lord we can't ask for much more but we do come to you asking Lord that you will hold those who are in our prayers our families those who are impacted by the, uh, the disease the pandemic that is running rampant around our world hold each one be with the people may there be peace in their hearts may there be a striving to understand to make space for the other person and then may there be peace that we live together honoring and giving glory to you we pray for the leaders of our nations we ask the Lord that you guide them in your way that they may seek the benefit the common good for all people and then may there be uh, a renewal of an intent to see that all of this world lives together as one Lord we need your we need your help so come touch us renew us and strengthen us for your work for the mission of peace that you've called us to and may your love shine in us and through us to make this world one of peace Lord we pray this as we make all of our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ our Savior and as he taught us so now we pray our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever amen For our meet and greet time, I'd like you to remember those who, who worship with you, those whom you haven't seen in a while because we've been forced to worship separately by video. Reach out to them with a card, a note, a letter. Send them an email or a text. Call them on the phone and tell them how much you are thinking about them and praying for them. Ask how they're doing. Share the love of God between you. I also invite you to remember your church with your tithes, your gifts, and your offerings. We thank you for your faithfulness, for it enables the ministry of this congregation to go forward. And there are many who benefit and are blessed by your participation in this ministry. There will be a screen at the end of this video, which will share how you may continue to send your tithes and your gifts to us. And we thank you.
Jesus continues to work with the disciples today, teaching them yet another skill that they will need as they be, as they become the ones who, who go into the world sharing his mercy and his grace, the good news to all the people. And so we hear these words from Matthew's Gospel. We are reading from the 18th chapter, verses 15 through 20. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others with you when, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. May we pray. Lord, we pray that we may know your peace, that we may have understanding and compassion for one another. And Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strong rock and our redeemer. And, uh, and may all of God's people say, Amen. You know, it's not true of all families, but you know, I've noticed that there seems to be squabbles that erupt in families. Sometimes we don't understand why. We can see the two people or two sides take up position against one another, and we look at it and go, why are you squabbling? That doesn't appear to be a problem. But I want to warn you, if you seek to step in and help to resolve the situation, you'll just turn the ire of both sides against you. This is not, this is not a place where we are wont to, uh, to walk in casually, for it does mean that you will be the one that uh, both sides take issue with. I've noticed that churches have their share of squabbles too. I've also noticed that most of the squabbles seem to come out of a lack of understanding. Churches are made up of, of people from different backgrounds. They have different histories. They have different ways of, of sharing the love of God in their lives. And when they, when they come from such different backgrounds, well, they will say something or do something that means a particular thing in their way of living. They'll share a, a word of love, a word of compassion, that to another person will not sound very compassionate or very loving, and they will take issue with it. They'll do something that uh, another person will look upon and go, well, why in the world did you do that? And a squabble erupts. And you can be there for the whole conversation, and you can be there for the witness of the whole whole action and still you won't understand because it's not something that is that is on the surface but is instead something that comes from in the heart Jesus knew that there would be squabbles and he goes to the disciples and he tells them that there will be times when people squabble he says if if, if another member of the church sins against you. Well, we look at that and we say, you know, how do we understand this, this sinning against me to be taking place? Well, it can come about because we're, uh, we're 
seeking to honor God in a particular way. And they will take issue with what we say or what we do. And then because no one takes time to sit down and work through the details, what did I say and, and why it, why it uh, was said a particular way or done a particular way, when we don't work through the situation, well, people are then only too willing to just jump up and down and say, um, that's wrong. That's not the right way to do it. When actually all they're saying is, that's not the way I do it. Well, you can see where that becomes a problem. Because since we all have our own way of doing things, well, there's never going to be an automatic one way of doing things. And there definitely is no one right way to do things. Try as we may. We're going to have particular words or particular actions that do not translate into other people's lives and situations. My goodness. We've heard these guidelines for resolving conflicts before. Jesus says that if another person uh, you know, offends, if there's another person, and he uses the word sins against you, this is what uh, Matthew uses in this text. If another sins against you, go to them in private and talk to them. Seek to work out your differences. And if, if they will listen to you and if they will become reconciled, then, then you've won that person back. You've, you've maintained the friendship. You've kept the family together. But if they won't listen, then take another one or two people with you so that you might have a witness to, to the fact that you are explaining it correctly and you're both seeking to understand and you're working together to come to a common resolution. And if it still won't be resolved, then you are to, to take it to the congregation. And you are to share with them your squabbles so that, so that there will be uh, an effort on the part of all people to understand, to know why there is such dissension between you and thereby to come to a place of, of resolving. And if, if, if the person with whom you are having this squabble will not listen even to the congregation, well then you, we are told that we are to treat them as a Gentile or a tax collector. You know, those people that Jesus spent so much time with. Oh, and maybe there's where the problem is. You see, when, when we've got all this the situation around us we've got we're, we're struggling to deal with people that are, are are just like us there's no disposable person in the world you can't just use people up and and throw them away and say well you have no purpose you have no no value here all people are loved all people are cared for all people have worth and meaning and just because their way of living doesn't coincide with your way of living doesn't mean that they are to be seen as other. We look upon them and we see instead, here's a child of God. Here is one whom Jesus died for. Here is one that we need to be reconciled to. Well, that brings us then to a to a further understanding. You see, there are consequences for what we do. There are eternal consequences for what we do. And when there's a squabble between people in the church, well, God's not praised. Feelings are hurt, lives are broken. And the family, the congregation, can serve great harm, can be served great harm. We have to guard against that, don't we? And so I think what Jesus really was telling the disciples was, you know, when, when there's evidence of, of a squabble, uh, that someone has sinned against you, what you need to do is take time alone with God. 
pray to God and say, I don't understand what's going on here. I need, I need your help. I need, I need uh, understanding. I need strength to come into me so that I may work through this and come to a proper end. Second, you need to enlist a prayer partner. Someone to pray with you and to talk with you and work through it so that there's a good understanding on both parts. Are you seeing it with, with eyes that, that are looking for the presence of love of God in the other person? Because it's very easy to say, I love God and obviously you do not. Because you don't do it like I do. Take that other person in prayer and pray together. Pray apart. But both of you pray that God will give understanding to your hearts and to your words. Give compassion and love and mercy to each other. And thirdly, what we need to do is we need to be the first ones willing to forgive. Because there is such difference in all of God's people. Because our families are from different backgrounds and our, our actions and our, our uh, responses are designed and governed by different ways of perceiving God's presence. Well, it's going to be natural that there are going to be times when we get it wrong. It's best to go ahead and seek forgiveness then. You know, maybe I didn't understand. Maybe I jumped to a conclusion. Maybe I missed understood your, your act of love, your words of compassion. Forgive me. And then when you have done the forgiving part, Open yourself up and give it time to allow the Holy Spirit to work in both of you and indeed in all of the church that understanding may come upon you. That there may be a, a movement to seeing that there is no one way to love God. Indeed, there are as many ways as there are people. And people will use the ways that are familiar to them to share the love of God with others. And so, I believe our text today is asking us, asking us to look at what we do, how we do it, with, a, with an eye towards understanding. God cares about you, about me, about all. And it is to our benefit to care about all along with God. You see, that's how we shine the love of Christ into this world. That's how we help other people to come to a, a relationship that says, you know, there's, there's blessing and there's love and there's honor and there's glory and there's praise in working together. Because in this way, the world then becomes what God created it to be. One seeking to be in relationship with God through everything. One seeking to share the love of God in everything. And may be to the glory of God. This we ask in Jesus' name. In the name of the Spirit. And the name of the Father. Amen. May we pray. Loving God, you've given us such opportunities to care not only for you, but for those all around us. Lead us now that our lives may shine forth your love through compassion, through mercy through forgiveness, through seeking your way in all things. And Lord, may we give you the praise and the glory, for we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 
And now I invite you as you are able to stand and join with us as we sing. And so be strong, be courageous, be steadfast in your faith, and let all that you do be done in love. Amen.